going on guys? Working on another video today. Now I have a show coming up. I'm going to Rod Run over in Pigeon Forge in uh, Tennessee. Now it's not really an audio show necessarily, but a lot of cool cars and trucks show up. So of course, bring in the F-250, bring in the Power Stroke there. That should be fun. That being said, to get ready for it, I'm gonna do a little audio stuff to this. Nothing crazy, but we're gonna do a nice little quick build to it. So let's get into that. For anybody newer to the channel or people who have not seen the truck, real quick, we've got a, a Tato 10 inch touchscreen up there. It has been decent for a budget touch screen. Definitely not perfect, but gets the job done. We've got uh, NVX 6x9s in both doors. We have SCAR Super Tweeters up here. The mids and highs are powered off this down for sound JP84. It's all a bit of a mess down here right now. Of course, everything kind of pulled out, but we did build this whole platform. We've got a bunch of lithium cells down here, 128 amp hours. We've got two positive runs running up from my Mechman alternator that's up, up front. We have two frame grounds here, two more frame grounds over on the other side. Here's the other two uh, frame grounds. All my speaker wires are good to go. Everything is ran nicely. Of course, we have my RCAs. For at the moment, we've got this uh, 5K hooked up. I might leave this. I might hook up one of my 8Ks. Not exactly sure yet, guys. We'll figure that out here soon. Of course, get all my fuses and everything. So, so far, this is what we're working with. Now, guys, I know you hate it when you're watching the video and a sponsor comes up and talking about some iPhone game or Simply Safe or becoming a Lord in Scotland or something. Now I've got some offers like that in the past, not what I really wanted to do. So when the guys over at Alfred Audio Group reached out, I was super stoked at the opportunity to work with them. Now specifically, I've done a ton of stuff with Def Bonds. So that's what I have the most experience with. So a couple things I absolutely love about them. One, not cookie cutter whatsoever. Most of their stuff has custom tooled baskets, has its own unique look, not just off the shelf stuff from China. Two, they have absolutely awesome coils, even on some of their more lower end budget stuff. Third, they make some of the most just awesome and windy, big beefy builds out there. I love that they put their money where their mouth is and they do some absolutely awesome stuff in the car audio space. Check out links to Alfred Audio in the description below. Now let's get back to the video, y'all. Now, when I originally did the build for the truck last summer, we had two of these black brick heavy hitter 15s hooked up. These things are monsters. Ton of fun using them. Thought about throwing them back in there. Not 100% sure yet. Not sure if that's really what I want to do. Again, it's not really an audio show. I don't need anything crazy, but I did want to have something half decent hooked up in there for it. Down here under a bunch of junk, we've got the box that we built for the truck. What is cool about this box, and exactly for the space we got in the truck, I just got holes in it to bolt it to the seatbelt points on the truck, so nice and safe. First thing to do, guys, we're going to be throwing this in there, start figuring out where and how we're going to want to mount stuff. One bolt back there, one bolt there, one bolt there. And then we've got heavy duty screws there, there, and there. That all ties everything in. A lot of people would say this is overkill, but guys, if I was to get into a wreck, that box was not secured down well. It would of course slide forward. Maybe this seat would stop it. Maybe it wouldn't. Again, that's super, super duper worst case scenario, but hey, it's real easy to bolt this thing in. So might as well. Now I've had this black brick 5K amp right here. Overall, it's done fine. Been a great amp for testing single subs. But we are gonna have two subs in here. And I would like to have a little bit extra power if I could, just in case I need it. So I'm thinking we're gonna mount 
one of my 8Ks right here. That'll be super easy to do. Y'all, here is my amp wall. This is one of the 8Ks that I blew. This is one of my good ones. We had the other good one here, but at the moment it is in the Sequoia until we hook up the Marts amp in there. We've got my MD12K. This is of course the third one I've had. Uh, it still works. Got this 3K uh, trio. I hooked it up at half ohm. It did not like it. It blew, no big deal. Okay guys, got this hooked up on this side. Again, this is super makeshift, this doesn't have to be perfect. But got it all hooked up, fuses, everything good to go there. Okay, let's power this guy on. Make sure this fella works. There she is, guys. Okay, good. Real quickly, I do gotta say, yes, I am aware that the amp, the amp logo is upside down. This is just the easiest way to mount it. So that's why we did that. I know that'll annoy some of y'all, but is what it is for this case, guys. You know, a lot of amps, like some of the Defonce amps, they actually have a little plate that you can unscrew and rotate. That is pretty cool. We'd like to see that on some more of these big amps. All right, now I could throw those two black brick subs in there. That would be awesome, but they're pretty big and they're pretty heavy. They definitely make things kind of a pain. Not 100% sure I want to do that yet. So what I think I'm going to do, I've got all these elite subs sitting around. For what they are, they're actually decently stout. So I think I'm going to throw two of them in there and see how it does. Balling on a budget with these things. These are a great budget option, so let's see how they do. Everything hooked up here. Let's turn this on, make sure everything works. Okay. All right, good to have everything seems to be working there. Next up, I've had this little down for sound amp hooked hook up. It's been great, but I thought about something I need to change up. So when I hooked this up, I had my front speakers ran off these, my rear speakers and my tweeters ran off this one, which honestly was not the best way to hook it up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run all my speakers into one output and all my tweeters into a separate output, just so that way I can uh, better adjust them. Okay, doing this will do a couple things. One, I have a four ohm speakers running to this. So of course running two sets of speakers into each channel, will drop that to two ohms. This amp is stable to two ohms, so that should be just fine. Still should be plenty of power going to all four speakers. And again, just having the tweeters on a separate channel means I can adjust them differently. So not super optimal, whereas this should be much better. Okay, good to have this kind of hooked up and everything working. Now, two more things I gotta do. One, real quick, gotta vacuum this thing out, make it just a little bit neater. Two, when I turn off my car, I do get a pretty good bump through my subs. I'm pretty sure the reason for that, is that the way I have this set up right now, my remote wire comes in here, it runs into this amp, it then jumps out of this amp, runs to my other amp. I know a lot of times that is the issue. So in order to fix that, we're gonna have to go get a relay, hook that up, and hopefully, that will solve the problem. Jesus. 